Any check you've ever gotten? <laughs> I guess for the, the, the weight cut? Um, no, no, no. I mean, it, it's because usually when you do the weight cut, it's uh, the weight cut solidifies that show money. That means you're you, you're gonna step in there. You, you did the hard part. I didn't get show money. That's for damn sure. Oh yeah. So no, it's not the easiest paycheck. And I have been in fights where I went in and just dominated a guy. I wasn't really touched. So I wouldn't say easiest paycheck. It still hurt getting okay. down to weight because I think uh, I was a bigger guy all through fight week, cutting down. But I still made the weight. I'm a professional, so I still made championship weight. So. Were you going in with the expectation that you would at least get your show money? Did they not sort of tell you what you would get coming out of it, or is it just kind of left up in the air and you were hoping for the best? No, they did. They they told me what it was. I let my, my manager did a good job of negotiating. Uh, that's what I pay him for. You know? So <laughs> he, he uh, negotiated. Uh, I knew what it was, but I, I was so I'm so driven to be the champion to where I would have done it for free. Uh, I couldn't pass up an opportunity. Let's say yesterday something happened, Darren Till caught the flu and wasn't able to make weight. I can't be that guy sitting at home saying, oh shit, I should have been there, man. I missed an opportunity. No, so I was gonna maximize every opportunity. If God said this was my time, this would have been my time. It's not, unfortunately. I just have to go back to the drawing board and I will be champion. What, uh, at what point did you realize you probably weren't fighting? I realized that uh, Friday morning when Darren Till walks into the back room, <laughs> in the back room and steps on the scale to check his weight, and I heard it say 169. I was like, "Shit!" Anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, more power to him. Uh, I'm not. Uh, some people might get the misconception that oh, he's upset he didn't get a shot. No, I'm not upset. I'm glad he made weight. You know, I, I wasn't rooting for him not to make weight. I'm glad he made weight. I know things happen and some people don't make weight sometimes, but I'm, I'm glad he made weight. This was his shot. He gets his shot. There seems to be there seems to be, quite a bit, there seems to be quite a bit of respect between the two of you. You and Darren, you've taken pictures together. He always respect, speaks quite respectfully of you. Like from, from your kind of vantage point, it, you know, do you respect him a lot? And what, where did that kind of relationship build? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, it's a saying you've heard all time and time again, real recognize real. You know, I, big respect for, for Till and Woodley. Uh, you know, we respect each other. We've been around each other. We, we've been in the same settings. We've actually had a meal together. Um, you know, big respect for him. We're chasing the same thing. He's a hungry lion just like I'm a hungry lion. And, you know, we, we understand that this is, is business. This is nothing personal. This is all business. When, it's come, when it comes time to do business, we're going to step into that octagon and we're going to do good business. He actually said um, he actually said that he wanted to defend the title against you. Was that something you guys have spoken about at the dinner or is that just a case of real recognizing real? <laughs> actually, to be honest, yeah, we did talk about that. When we were together, we were just like, yeah, we're going to make this fight happen. This is a fight that he wants and this is a fight that I want. This is the thing about me and him is, like I said, we're both hungry lions. And, and, and we're, we have that thirst for competition. So he recognizes it, and I, and I see it in his eyes. He's a guy that, that thrives in competition. He wants to test himself against the best. And I want to test myself against who they call the best. So we have that mutual respect for each other. So when we step inside that octagon, the world we be watching. That's for damn sure. So Dana said that Colby's getting the next shot, for sure. Would you put yourself in the same situation again as a backup fighter? No. Uh, but also Dana says a lot of things. <laughs> Dana also said women would never fight in the UFC and uh, they're some of the most uh, marketable <laughs> athletes right now. So, no, I, I, I'm not going by that. But, um, I, um, no, I don't think I'll put myself in that situation again. I think I'm in a, I'm high enough up there to where I don't need to do that. If I need to take one more fight to solidify myself as the top contender, then, you know, so be it. But. You know, I don't think this is something that I need to go through again and not because if, if you're going to pay me show and win, I'll think about that. That's for damn sure. I'll think about it, but I don't think this is something I want to put myself through. Again. So if that fight does happen, you know, the winner of tonight faces Colby, would you want to face the loser of the main event tonight? I don't mind. I don't mind. Absolutely. Let's say Darren Till loses tonight. I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'll fly to Liverpool and fight him for his, in a stadium because I believe he can do that.
I'll fly to Liverpool. I need to go see my Nigerians over there in Liverpool anyway. So I'll fly over there and, uh, you know, we'll make it happen. Or if Tyron does lose this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he's going to want to take some time off because he's been champ for a little while now. And, you know, that would be kind of hard for a champion to deal with losing their, their title. So I'm sure he's going to want to take some time off. So it doesn't matter. I'll fight the loser or I'll fight the winner tonight. I'll fight him right after the fight if I need to. I think you're taking it pretty gracefully. You're at the point right now where one guy could have dropped off and you would have been fighting for a title. Now you hear that another gentleman is going to get the, the shot, the next shot, and you're not getting that shot. That's not upsetting to you? Like I said, Dana says a lot of things. You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not dwelling solely on, on, on what Dana said yesterday because tomorrow Dana could change his mind. So I, I'm, not, I'm not fully going on that. Uh, I'm, I'm big into uh, self-belief. I believe in myself and I also believe, I believe in karma. I believe thing, everything happens for a reason. If this, is, if this is what it's meant to be, if it was meant for me to be fighting tonight in my hometown, Dallas, Texas, then I'll be the champion tonight. But it's not meant to be, so, you know, it's only a matter of when it's going to happen. You mentioned uh, potentially fighting Till or Woodley. There will be business, there will be competition. Is the same, do you feel the same way for Colby? Is that something different? No, that's, that's, that's more than business. That's good business after I personally beat his ass. That, 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 that one's a little added bonus. There's not one guy in the UFC that I can say that. I have negative feelings towards except Kobe Covington. I, I truly want to put my hands through his face. That's a guy that uh, the world would be watching as well. I mean, there's, there's not a day that goes by that I don't get a, a, a message, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter saying, man, I can't wait for you to kill Kobe Covington. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mike.